kids, but I'm not going to take a long time. Because God's already moving this morning. Right. The word of God says this. It says, be still and know that I am God. Stop this morning. Quiet yourself before him. God, we surrender our minds this morning. We tarry and we wait. She called out that time. God, we wait. God, we cease from all our efforts. We're going to stop trying to accomplish it in ourselves. And right now, we surrender. God, whatever we walked in here with, we surrender. Whatever has been pressing, because of when the psalmist wrote this song, the Assyrian army was coming to take siege over the Israelites. That word siege meant that they were trying to come and take them captive. It was a process where they were surrounding a fortified place and trying to get those that were defending it to surrender, to quit, and to give up. And they were doing it by force. They were, the enemy is trying to compel you this morning. That God is not real. That God has not heard your cry. That he wants you to quit. But we declare this morning that we will not quit. And we will continue to believe. And we will surrender. We will take refuge. The word of God says this. God is our refuge. He is our shelter. That means that he, we are in a position of refuge. When you give your heart to the Lord, he, he takes you and places you in Christ. And in Christ, you are in a shelter. You are in a strong tower. You are in a refuge. Yes, yes, yes. That's a legal position that God has given you. You have a legal right to say, The word of God says he is my strength. He has given me the power and the boldness to overcome everything that comes my way. Everything that comes my way. It says he is a very present help. That means he is omnipresent. He is everywhere all the time that you need him. There's not one thing that he missed.
willing. So when you go before the master, when you go before the great I am, when you go before the king of kings, when you go before him, you go with a boldness and an expectancy because he, he's available to you. He's a very present help. There's tissues. <laughs> In time of what? Trouble. That means, Christian, you're going to find yourself in trouble. <laughs> and it says adversity, affliction. Listen to this word. Anguish, distress, tribulation, and trouble. But God is my fortress. He is my place of security. He is my place of survival. He is my place. And this word, he's fortified. That means enhanced through additional ingredients. You know the ingredient that you need this morning? You need the power of the Holy Spirit to, yes. to fill yes. you up. Yes. Yes. You need the power of God to begin to move in our hearts and our lives. We need, I need a refreshing. I have a newborn. Y'all know what that's like. <laughs> Keeps me up all night, all day long, and I love her. I love her so much, but you know what I need? I need God to refresh me. I need God to renew me. Because you know what happens when you get tired? The enemy comes in like a flood because your walls are down. Your, 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 the fortification of the refuge. You begin to get tired and weak and weary. And all of a sudden, here comes the siege of the Assyrians. And they're coming upon you. And the enemy is coming upon you trying to bring havoc and trouble upon your life. And God is saying, no, I am your refuge. I am your, your strength. I am your very present help in time of trouble. And I have given you enhanced ingredients through the power of the Holy Spirit that you can take refuge in me continuously. Because I am a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I am a friend that will always be there for you. And he says, the Bible says this, Psalms 46, 2. Therefore, I will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Fear is a tactic of Satan to get you to doubt God in your heart and your mind. Listen, fear is of the enemy. He's trying to paralyze you to get you to believe God's not going to touch your marriage. God's not going to restore that. God's not going to bring back your children. God's not going to heal your body. God's not going to give you the job that you need. God's not going to do this. God's not going to do that. God's not going to keep your kids in this world, in this day and age. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Fear has no place here. Fear has no place here. For I will rest. Nothing like it. 
teenagers, young kids. Now listen, teach your children in the way that they should go. Amen. Jeff laughs at me, my newborn, she can't, I don't, she don't understand. But I sing over her and I read the word to her. Amen. Every night we try to read the word to her. And he comes in, he's like, what you doing? I said, I'm reading the word. And, I, and then he sits down and starts reading to her and she might not understand right now, but she's going to. She going to know mama's reading over me. Daddy's reading over yes, me. Yes. And then she's going to begin to understand it. And then she's not going to know anything else. <laughs> because the word of God is already going to be implanted in her heart. It's already going to be there. And I'm not going to say she's going to be perfect. Because we know. Because you ain't perfect either. Never mind. But that word is going to be able to bring her back. That word, that word is going to be able to keep her still. That word of God is implanted in her heart. Implanted in their hearts. Is going to be able to keep them That's right. as they go out and have to make their own choices and do their own things. That word, the spirit of God that's in them is going to bring up the word of God that you've been implanting in them. They're going to know the presence of God and they're going to know the presence of this world. And they're going to know the difference between the presence. They're going to know the difference between the voices. Because we got to learn it first. Yeah, yeah. But God said... Though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea. Though the waters roar. That word roar means there's such a great commotion and tumult and rage and war that it produced a moan. Have you ever been so broken that all you can do is just yeah. moan? Yeah. Like there's a groan. Yeah. That word moan means there is a prolonged sound of pain and grief. But God says this, deep calls unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts and the waves and the billows go over me. Like you just get keep, keep getting hit. Yet the Lord will command his love and kindness in the daytime and the night his song shall be with me and prayer unto the God of my life. What did this produce? The moan and the pain produced a groan that produced a song. Sing to the Lord, church. What we were doing this morning as we were worshiping was singing and declaring his word despite what we've been through. And the spirit of God began to move in this house. And then he takes our praise from our pain. Let the moan produce a song in you. Let the pain produce a praise in you. I don't know if y'all ever heard this song, but it said, we're blessed in the city, and we're blessed in the field, and we're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. The devil is defeated. We are blessed. I mean, come on, I could sing that and be, and it just let the joy of the Lord fill yes, me up. Yes. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. The enemy is defeated. We are blessed. Look, as I'm saying it, I see smiles coming on your faces. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come. I wish I could sing, Naya. And when I go, I cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must what cease. For the devil is what? Defeated. Why? Because we are blessed. <laughs> you know, Danielle and I, we were over there taken back with the enemy stole. I don't know. I had some people looking at us and laughing. Because you know what? We taught the kids to take back what the enemy stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. And we were doing the motions. We said, we know we've been in kids' ministry too long. <laughs> but you know what? If you begin to get with the kids and a childlike faith, I'm taking back yes. what the enemy stole from me. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. And I'm taking it back. I'm taking back my healing. I'm taking back my freedom.
walk through some things and you begin to press into him and you begin to trust him and you begin to pray to him and you begin to worship him. Listen, when the water is stirring, yes. get in the water. Yes. 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 In Ezekiel, it says that he is the door and the river of life flows from underneath the threshold of the altar, of the altar, the altar meaning the sacrifice. When we come up to this altar, that means we believe in the sacrifice. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the river of life. And from the door that gives you access to Christ, you can walk through it. And then you can come to the altar and the threshold, meaning humility. Sometimes we got to humble ourselves. And then the river of God will flow from the altar. And he said in the book of Ezekiel that whatever the river touches, there is life. And that wherever the river touches, he said that there is healing. There is healing to everything that gets in the river. So if you don't understand when God begins to move, give it a try. I'm going to tell you what somebody told me. They said give Jesus a chance and if he don't work, and you could go back to doing what you were doing. And I gave Jesus a chance 13 years ago. And here I am, still following him, still trusting him. So you might not understand everything that's going on, but give it a shot. <laughs> give him a try. I promise you, you'll never regret it. I promise you that when his spirit begins to move and you begin to feel that excitement and that joy, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. The world can't take it away. But guess what? You can give it away. Don't give your joy away. When I met Jeff, he said, Angela, you're so serious all the time. <laughs> He said, you need some joy. You need some joy. So my, my, my seriousness and his joy balance each other out. But the Lord wants to give us joy. And that's one thing he taught me. Is God, want, God look, we real good at being religious. But God wants to bring some joy into the house of God. It's a joy to serve the Lord. It's a joy to be set free. It's a joy to be forgiven. It's a joy to be delivered. It's a joy to know my God is willing and able and available. My God is omnipresent. He is always at all times there to help me. My paracletos, the one that's called alongside to help me, the one that will go with me. If I make my bed in hell, he is there. If I make my bed in heaven, he is there. He is there with me at all times. And he has got you in a development process. You are in a development process as a Christian. Y'all remember those Polaroids that you should that you, you would take the picture and then you want to see what the picture looked like, so you would shake it like real quick. <laughs> but I want to see what this looks like. Well, God has got you in a and it's really I don't even know if that helps. <laughs> we, just, we just feel better about it. <laughs> because there's a slow development process that God is changing you. He's teaching you how to be the dad, the mom, the brother, the sister, the uncle, the grandparent, the worker, the friend, the Christian that he wants you to be. And that's through a process of trial and trouble and God changing you as we surrender and allow the river of God to flow that anything it touches, it brings forth life. That as we're still in him, that God will change you and develop you. And in the, in the book of Ezekiel, it says that he goes and he measures. He measures the water. He measures the water. He measures the water. And it says that some go to the ankles. And that's just, I'm okay with being saved. And he says he measures again and they go to the knees. And that's, I surrender, and I'm surrendered to you, and I have a prayer life, and I have a devotional life, and, and I'm walking a little bit further with the Lord. And then he, they go to the waist, and, and the loins represent a place of, I believe in the miracle working power of God. I believe that God can do this. I have a prayer life. I have a devotional life. I have, I'm walking with God. I'm trusting God. I believe God. And then he, he said, but this, we don't have to stop there. 
Don't stop believing God. Don't stop trusting God. Don't stop asking. See, what God did this morning, you can have at home. You don't have to wait to church on Sunday. Some people, I think they just wait. You don't wait to ride off of somebody else's faith. That's right. Don't wait. Now look, if I had cups and I filled them all up to the brim, and then I came and I just poured water over them, they would do what? They would overflow. So if we go home and allow God and our relationship with God to, to flourish and to grow, and we, we, let me say, press in and possess a relationship with God continuously before we come into the church house, when we come into the church house, it would overflow. And I just want you to let y'all know, church starts at 9 o'clock in the morning in the prayer room. That's right. In case y'all didn't know, church starts 9 o'clock in the morning in the prayer room. Come on. Yeah, come on. Pastor Matt, you're going to have to get a new prayer room. Because all these people that I'm looking at, they come in a prayer. Come on. You want to know why? Because that's where God is going to cultivate a relationship with you. That's where you're going to learn to be still. That's where you're going to learn to surrender in your prayer life. That's where the river of God. I walked in, Pastor Matt, declaring the word of God. I was like, yeah, let's jump in the river. I'm ready. Yes, yes. Yes. Look, you don't got to walk in all timid. We're not timid. That's right. No, God, do it. Do it in this house. Do it. I'm going to owe him some money after he's done. <laughs> do it, Lord. Don't stop doing it. Don't stop. God, I'm going to trust you. God, I'm going to believe you. When you begin to say those words, God begins to move in your heart. Yes, he does. And you know what? You're not all over the place trying to figure out how you're going to fix your problem. You're looking at him Hallelujah. to do it. Yes, yes. You're not running around in your heart and your mind figuring it all out. God, I believe. Look, I, I walked in a prayer room, I jumped in the water, and then all I hear is Danielle coming in the door. Shut up, I'm on Koshi. Danielle came and jumped in the river. Jump in the river when God is moving. Get in the water and believe God. And if you're uncomfortable, it's okay. You know how when you jump in cold water and then you get used to it? That's right. That's right. You get used to it. You'll get used to it and be the best thing you ever did in your life. And then those people that you were talking about last week going, oh, they're so loud, they're so boisterous, they so, oh, what are they doing in there? You're going to be that exact one. <laughs> no, you're going to be that exact one. I just want to let you know. Don't judge. The people of God, she had her shoes off. She was running. Yeah, she was excited about what God was going to do. She was weeping. You should have seen her get a snot running down her face. You know what? She got healing yes. in her body. Yes. She went and got hers. I don't think that John the Baptist was looking so good, Pastor Matt. I don't think so. Look, we don't have to be politically correct in here. When the power of God begins to move, get in the water and let him move. Yes, and yes. don't stop him from moving. Yes, that's right, that's right. Don't sit in the back. Don't wait. If I put a million dollars on this um, altar, y'all all be here. <laughs> yes, you will. I see coats sliding off, shoes sliding off. You'll be wrestling for that money if I put that on there. Y'all already know. Well, Jesus died on Calvary Come on. Yeah, yeah. for you and for me. That's right. And we act like, oh, should I go up there? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should go up there. Wow. Get it. Step up the I don't know what, you know what people are going to think of me if I go up there? Yes. Listen, I learned a long time ago, stop caring for other people yeah. and then yeah. you get it. Because you know what? They ain't going to be standing before the throne of God with you. And they ain't going home with you neither. Amen. And they ain't there when the enemy is coming in to That's oppress right. and oppress his people. They're not there. Right. You are there. Amen. You get what you need from Hallelujah. Jesus. Yeah. Every time you walk in these doors, you don't stop, you don't quit, you don't give up, you don't 
stop believing if you don't understand it. Guess what? He understands that you don't understand it. And that's okay. That's right. Say, God, I don't understand. I feel weird in this place. <laughs> and he will begin to reveal himself to you and to your children and to your children's children. And curses and things in your life will be broken off of your life. Mindsets will change. Your children will serve him. And their children's children will serve him. Because why? You learn to be still. You learn to rest in him. You learn to trust. You learn to be quiet in him. You learn that God is my refuge and my present help in time of trouble. You learn how to stay still and know that he is God and know that you will not be shaken. You learn how to do that. And because you did it, they watched you do it. Other people will watch you do it. I watch Pastor Matt every Sunday without a doubt. And I don't think he does it to show, be shown. He gets right here. Right here. He's praying for his family. He's praying for this church, I'm sure. He's praying for you. That takes humility because he wants to see every single person in here kept by the power of God. That's the greatest miracle, I think. I think one of the greatest miracles is for you to surrender to the Lord and be kept. That's so good. That the Spirit of God in you he ain't going to lose his hold on you. You can, you can walk away from him now. So I pray that this morning that we surrender to the moving and the spirit of God this morning. That we surrender to the river. The river of life. He said there's a river of life that flows from the altar. From the place of Calvary, from the place where Jesus died, and that river, the Spirit of God wants to bring life to whatever has death this morning. If you don't know Him, I ask you this morning, surrender your heart to Him. And children, you're not too young. You're not too young. Jesus loves you. He died for you. And if you want to give your heart to Him, you surrender to Him. You need God to do something in your life this morning. You need him to bring life where there has been death this morning. And you haven't been still. And I don't mean still in your body. I mean still in here. Still in here. That brings havoc to our hearts and our homes. To our heart. God wants to bring rest this morning. And peace this morning. That he's in control. He is the great I am and he is in control. So if you would stand with me this morning, not if you would come up. I tried to be shorter than normal because I'm just as long-winded as Pastor Matt. But I believe God was is already working today. He don't need me. I just wanted to give you what he gave me this morning. <coughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember, if I had a million dollars up here, you'd all be up at the altar. <laughs> Saying that one more time before I give the altar call. God said there's healing. I am willing. I am available and I am able. There's peace. I'm willing, I'm available, and I'm able. There's freedom, there's deliverance, there's healing for your family, there's restoration, there's provision for whatever you need. And it's at the altar. It's at the sacrifice. It's at the feet of Jesus. He said, if you want the river of God to touch that area of your life or your family's life, you've been praying for, I pray that you come to the altar and that God would move. He would continue to move. He's been moving in our midst. God, we ask you to continue to move. If that's you this morning, come on up to the altar and get in the river and allow him. Be still in the river. Tarry in the river. Wait in the river. Run to him this morning. <laughs>